Have you ever found yourself cleaning the dishes for a man-child? Doing laundry for a 5 foot 10 baby boy whose diet consists of beer and wielding the tongue of a cod lobby who thinks racial slurs are his God-given gift? Well, if you find yourself in this situation, you have two choices. Kill him and go to jail to have an epic sapphic romance behind bars. Or catfish him on Twitter as a femboy to show all his little cod buddies screenshots of him jelking at Deferry Rule 34. I'm so a black sheep, have you any soul? No sir, no sir. But I do have enough time today to weaponize this tongue for something other than pleasuring your mother. Let's talk about weaponized incompetency. To begin, weaponized incompetency is characterized by purposeful incompetency to evade a task. Examples regularly being pretending to not know how to do the dishes and refusing to learn how to do them right so their partner has to do them. Or starving themselves, not eating, ruining food to prove that they're just so sad and pathetic and need a big mommy milker to cook all their meals for them. Me too, bro. I want that, but you know, can't have everything. Anyone can commit weaponized incompetency. I'm sure most of us have at some point in our lives, but the trait is often heavily associated with husbands and boyfriends. I have no intention of promoting a misandrous viewpoint. I tend to criticize both men and women equally. We're we're merely discussing a dysfunction in how men are raised in Western culture. So no man hate here, just man annoyance. As the economy gets diddled harder than a fertile young woman at the back of a rock concert, old traditions and expectations become exceedingly more absurd to expect. It's practically impossible to uphold a family in America on one salary alone. As both men and women are working, they equally need to do the household chores. Expecting a woman to do laundry, take care of the kids, clean, cook, etc. Well, working is insanity. Your wife or girlfriend isn't your damn mommy, and it's clear your mother didn't teach you these skills either, so I don't know, maybe learn them? I find it absolutely tickles me that so many incompetent individuals pride themselves on their pseudo Rick and Morty-esque intellect, only to not know how to clean a fucking dish properly. Oh, sorry. Did I get in the way of your mindset? <laughs> mindset? How about start with scrubbing those skid marks out of your tidy Whitey's Walter White, cooking meth looks significantly less cool when you have shit stains on display, given it's not all men. Merely enough for weaponized incompetency to be this heavily associated with men. Let's take a look at some content reflecting our topic. Oh, this is crazy. Look, after Valentine's Day, look, everything. Stuff all over. Dishes. Crazy thought here, pal. Hear me out. What if, instead of being a fat piss baby, you get a damn broom and clean up after yourself, instead of needing your wife to do everything for you? Look, I'm not gonna pretend like I know either of these people, but it's the sheer idiocy of instead of communicating and having an honest conversation with his wife about household labor and finding a middle ground that respects both of their time, he pulls out his phone to broadcast it, as if it's some punishment to his wife for not cleaning up after his skid-marking ass. I realize it can be jarring for someone you're close to to stop doing something for you out of nowhere. It can feel isolating and hurtful. But if you're being a burden, you're being a burden. You aren't in the right just because your feelings are hurt. Feelings don't have morality or sensibility. Don't use them as the compass of reason. Feel your feelings while respecting that you are a fallible being. Anybody have any guesses why he would be doing this amount of domestic labor prior to golfing? If I had to guess, I would guess that it's because he doesn't normally participate to this level in doing the domestic labor. So he's treating it as a transaction. See, see, I did all of these things so I can go golf now. See how I did you a favor? See how I did you a favor by doing all of these chores? It's seen as help to their wives. And it's seen as help because they're not doing it regularly. It's interesting, they're in fact withholding their support. They're withholding support from their wives, from their families. 
they're weaponizing it. They're weaponizing their support by saying, I will only do these things if I get this in return. If I can go spend six, eight, nine, ten 10 hours out golfing with my buddies, but you will only get my support if I get to go and do that. And as women, we're just so happy that they're actually doing something, that they're actually doing the work that we typically take on ourselves, that we're like, yeah, okay, it's a breadcrumb. And then as soon as they've completed that activity, they're going to pull back and weaponize that support again until they have something else that they wanna do, to which they'll bring it to you. And again, say, you can have my support if I can do this. Men often tell me it's women that make domestic labor transactional by typically um, doing sexual favors in return for those domestic labor. But isn't it, isn't it interesting that we paint it that way instead of men refuse to actively participate in their home in caring for their children unless they are provided sexual favors in return. Men are weaponizing the support of their own spouse and families by withholding it unless they get sexual favors in return, unless they're getting something in return. And in this instance, he's wanting to go golfing without his wife nagging and complaining about how he doesn't ever help her. And now he's going to be gone for eight or nine hours, furthering the amount of time he won't be helping her. Using the bare minimum as currency so your partner will let you do things? First, she isn't your mommy, so why do you need her permission? Unless she doesn't want you to go because you haven't been doing your fair share of work in the relationship and running off pretending like it isn't your job, metaphorically spitting in her face. I don't like doing dishes or cleaning, but I do them because it's a part of being alive and not living like a medieval peasant. This guy rather run off to the golf club to practice his rich white boy left than be a supportive and functional partner. You know being a decent person to the person you decided to couple with doesn't suddenly erase your hobbies. You can still have time for that, do both. I mean, I'm sure having a partner and kids takes up more time you could be spending doing literally anything else. Just don't have kids or a partner partner then if you want more time. It's not like you're forced to. Personally, I'd rather spend all my time making drawings and writing, so I'll pass on getting myself either of those. I see so many people, both men and women, acting like it's a necessity to have a partner. Look, if you aren't someone that can be reasonable and understanding to your significant other, don't burden someone else with you. Learn to be a better partner first. And it's okay not to be perfect. You're not expected to go into a partnership being Mr. Dreamboat. But going into a relationship knowing you aren't going to pull your weight, by that point, you're just being cruel. Hey, can you wash the potatoes on the counter? Yeah. Hey, this, uh, palm olive is good to wash the potatoes, right? Oh my gosh, Brandon, you're supposed to use water, not soap. You just go in there and sit down and I'll take care of this. Weaponized incompetence. Trying to call this comedy is making light of an issue that is serious. There is a stress gap between men and women. Compared to men, women are twice as likely to suffer from severe stress and anxiety. Married women do more housework than married men. When men and women marry each other, even if there are no kids in the picture, women do more housework than their partners, on average. Yes, even when they make the same as or more than their male partners. The only time you see that average shift is when women are the sole providers. Yeah, it's like this much, this much, it does a little bit more. Men have more free time than their wives. Even among teenagers, boys are spending more time on leisure than girls. Why isn't weaponized incompetence funny? Because it's oppressive. Because failing to do a good job on purpose makes you seem unreliable. Failing to do a good job on purpose is opting in to breaking their trust. It's setting up a situation without their consent to demand their time and energy. Your failure to put in a good faith effort leaves them no other choice but to overcompensate for you. When you use weaponized incompetence, you put your needs and interests above theirs. You remove their autonomy and choice. You take their time and energy and access to opportunities without their consent. 
not funny. They're right. This isn't a funny joke. This man isn't clever for being a burden on his partner. The men who find weaponized incompetence funny or clever must have the IQ of a damn goldfish. It's like being proud of squatting in someone else's home. Someone might say, oh, it's just a potato. It's not that big of a deal. Make those media literate children look like damn Dostoevsky. I think I said that right, probably not. It's the repetitive insolence that builds into a mountain right in front of their face, but they're too idiotic to see it. Making jokes that encourage this behavior will only serve to further divide people in relationships. It's like when you pass a video of some lady joking about how men aren't real men if they don't pay for dinner or open the door for her. It's creating a culture of entitlement on both ends. Cleaning up after yourself isn't gonna kill you as much as splitting a damn bill is. We get so obsessed with these gender roles, we forget we are the same species and our experiences aren't all that different. Not undermining the real imbalance of assault and hatred towards women. And it's not funny to take advantage of the opposite sex just because it's what tradition says. Shut the fuck up. Go back far enough, they kill your firstborn for good weather. Tradition might ass crack. You leave your God complex, but you can't even make life. Normalize letting incompetent men starve 2023. She made a full family meal for dinner that her grown adult husband then refused to eat because he wanted nachos, but refused to make the nachos and then told her that if she didn't make them, he just wouldn't eat. I guess you're not eating tonight then. The entitlement is so palpable. I feel like I'm choking on smog. This grown ass man had someone cook for him and his offspring a whole ass meal and he's upset he didn't get his little nachos. Is he stupid? In what world is this even remotely reasonable? It's people like this that let their emotions be the sole guide of their every action that I don't get. Yeah, sometimes people make me stuff I don't really want, but I'll eat it because I'm thankful for what this person has done for me. Because I realize enjoying a meal a little more isn't as important as this person, given it's not like a texture or taste issue. I'm a very picky eater and sometimes there's just stuff that makes me wanna puke. The fact this man puts vaguely enjoying a meal a little more over his wife is beyond goofy. This guy is the whole ass circus. <laughs> I have a story that will make your blood pressure go to the roof. So a couple years ago, a post went viral on Chinese media. A new dad is asking for help. And his question is, we just have a newborn baby. And suddenly my wife started to ask me to do a lot of things, like helping her with dishes, helping her with chore, and helping him with the baby. So the dad's question is, what can I do so my wife will not ask me for help? And hundreds of dads provide their advice to this dad. The answer with the second most like that, just play dumb. Every time when your wife asks you to do anything, just play dumb and make things messy. Like you have a low IQ. You don't know how to function. You don't know how to do. Even she told you a million times how to do those things. Just pretend you don't know how to do those things. And eventually she will never ask you to help with anything. That is the second most like answer. Let me tell you the top most like answer. So the top most like answer is actually a reply to the second most like answer. So the top like answer said, okay, that is so immature. Let me tell you how I handle it. So every time when my wife asks me to do something, I will immediately do it. And sometimes I will even voluntarily to help her with certain things, like cleaning the dishes or helping with the baby, change the baby's diaper or feeding the baby. But I will intentionally to mess things up. Like every time when I voluntarily to feed the baby, I will make the milk too hot or too cold. And every time when I voluntarily to do the dishes, I will break a glass or two. So every time I will mess things up on purposely, but every time I will voluntarily to help with my wife. So she will feel grateful that I'm willing to help. And she will understand that I want to help. I just cannot help her because I cannot do it as good as she did. So at the end, my wife stopped to ask me for help, but she also really appreciate that I want to help. And thousands of dad copied that answer and said, bookmark it, learn it. I'm going to do it when I have a kid. The worst part is there are thousands of those kind of men in the, this world and they're not shame about it. Pro tip for everyone, if you aren't willing to make some sacrifices and work with your partner, don't have a partner 
or a damn baby by that matter. A child isn't just something you bring into this world to uphold a mediocre name. It's a real individual. The fact so many people see their partner as property almost, like some pets to get them off, is disgusting. So many people see themselves as better or above their partner, and that's horrendous. Don't choose a partner you aren't on the same mental level with. Respect them as equals. Don't make a child with someone just because they're attractive. I feel like this isn't rocket science. My son and I got COVID while my husband somehow managed to avoid it. So we isolated on the top floor. The kitchen is so much worse than I could have imagined. I don't even want to look in the sink. A huge part of me knows how bad it's going to be because the entire kitchen smells like vinegar. That means there's rotting food hidden somewhere. I how can this person even call himself a husband if he wasn't taking care of his family? What happened to in sickness and in health? Letting mold grow in a mess this bad to pile up? What was he doing? Just waiting for his wife not to be sick so the house wouldn't be disgusting? I genuinely don't understand how these people's brains work. Like, dude, this is your house too. Your partner and child is sick be a decent person and clean up and uh, I don't know care I don't even know what to say anymore because it's so painfully obvious this is unacceptable and people like this shouldn't be allowed to breed if they can't even be a decent parent or partner if you're enjoying my content consider joining my discord server and if you enjoy my art check out my Etsy with adult coloring sheets shirt designs and wall art all linked in description back to the video. This was a more heated video. When it comes to videos like this, regarding topics, be it on men or women, where one party completely disregards the people they're supposed to care about merely on the basis of something as shallow as gender, it pisses me off. We as a society need to be more understanding and compassionate regardless of age, gender, race, or whatever the fuck. It's funny how so many people value protecting their own ego over the people they're supposed to care about. But anyway, that's all I have for today, folks. You have work tomorrow, or school, or ranting about people who think washing their ass is gay. But as always, don't dream about wheat-based byproducts.